If you would like to appear on an episode of My Story Living with Lupus, you can contact us at mystorylivingwithlupus at gmail.com. Also visit us on our Instagram page and also our website, My Story Living with Lupus. The views and opinions expressed on my story, Living with Lupus podcast, represents each person's individual experience. By listening to this podcast or reading our blog, you agree not to use this podcast or blog as medical advice to treat any medical condition in either yourself or others. As always, consult your own physician for any medical issues that you may be having. My Story Living with Lucas podcast is officially trademarked, all rights reserved. Thank you for joining me for another episode of My Story, Living with Lupus. I'm your host, Susan Hendricks, and I'm so glad that you could join me on this Friday morning, August 14, 2020. Looks like August is just flying by. Hey, did you know that a thunderstorm can cause an individual with asthma to be hospitalized. There's research on it. We'll talk about that. Also, we'll be talking about cachexia syndrome and lupus. I will break down the origin of the word, provide you with signs, symptoms, and we'll also find out if there exists treatment for cachexia syndrome when a person has lupus. So you know what I want you to do. That's right. From all the way from the United States to South Africa. That's right. Grab your cup of coffee, your cup of tea, because you know what I'm drinking. I have a cup of organic pomegranate white tea from Trader Joe's. And if you're listening late at night, go ahead and grab your favorite glass of wine. Come on and join the conversation right here on my story, Living with Lupus. We all know the benefits of apple cider vinegar. Now you guys know that I'm a vegan and that I have lupus along with other health issues. I used to take ACV every morning before I worked out, but eventually the taste of ACV got to me and I had to look for another alternative and that's when a friend of mine turned me on to Goli. Goli is the first apple cider vinegar gummy. They give you all the benefits of ACV without the taste. That's right. Goli is vegan, gelatin free, gluten-free, and 100% organic. And the vitamins and the ACV in Goli promotes a healthy heart by maintaining a healthy cholesterol range, controls blood sugar levels, and also curbs your appetite. And the best part about Goli, for every sale 
generated. A child in need receives a six-month supply of essential vitamins with vitamin angels. So if you don't believe what I'm saying, I'm going to give you some information so you can try Goalie for yourself. Here's a promo code you can use. It's Sue Lynn One. That's S U E L Y N N E One. And you'll receive 5% off of your initial purchase. Also, I'll leave a link in the description in the podcast. So, why don't you go and try it for yourself? You won't believe how good it tastes. That's Goalie. All right, we're here to discuss thunderstorms can trigger asthma attack that need hospitalization study states. Now, the calm before the storm isn't really so calm, at least not for anyone with asthma or other severe breathing disorders. New research shows that during the days before a major Thunderstorm hits emergency room visits for seniors who suffer from asthma and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, better known as COPD, rose significantly, according to a research letter published Monday in JAMA Internal Medicine. Although the study used Medicare data for those 65 years and older, the danger is just as real for younger people with severe respiratory illnesses, and it can certainly impact children and younger adults with asthma. It also states in this report that... um, it needed to have, they needed to have the specific data Medicare provides so they could compare hospitalization rates with weather patterns in small areas. Now, thunderstorm asthma, the phenomenon of thunderstorm asthma was first recorded in Brigham. England in 1983 and in Melbourne, Australia in 1987, where widespread waves of asthma attacks appear to be connected to violent thunderstorms during high pollen count. It happened again in Melbourne in 2016, killing eight people, and sending some 8,000 to the emergency room. Now, no one understood why this might happen since rain typically washes pollen out of the air. Now, in addition, the size of the rye pollen spores in the Melbourne area were too large to be easily inhaled and typically lodged in the sinuses before they could reach the lungs. What do you think about that so far? Now, I know for myself, and I'm only speaking for myself, I can tell you when it's getting ready to rain, when It's getting ready to, the temperature, I should say, change, because that's when my fibromyalgia will hit me. Yes, I will sit up and tell my sister it's getting ready to rain or it's going to be real cold. 
And she'll ask me, she said, how do you know? I said, my fibromyalgia is getting ready to flare up. And um, she never pays any attention until it happens. But how many of you with fibromyalgia or even say lupus can tell what before the weather will change based on your body's reaction. I know I can. And let me tell you, now, right before the snow hits here in Michigan, I will get an extreme pain. My fibromyalgia will act up along with my lupus. And I'm in so much pain that it is unbearable, just like um, springtime here in Michigan. Um, The weather gets hot, it gets cold, and when it gets cold, I know beforehand because I have to put on socks, I have to put on a hoodie, I have to put on a skull cap, and I have to put on my sweatpants, and that's how I sleep. Now, um, my family um, would look at me like I'm crazy until they got used to seeing me like this, and they would tell me, it is so warm, and you're in socks, sweatpants, hoodie, and a skull cap, and I would say yes, because for number one, my joints are aching and I'm cold as ice inside. And they would say, well, maybe it's due to your anemia. I said, no, this is not my anemia acting up. I said, I feel like a freezer on the inside. That's how cold I get. So I know for a fact that I can tell when the temperatures um, here in Michigan will change. Now, getting back to the thunderstorms, the University of Georgia researchers studied the Australian event and published a paper the following year. They found that downdrafts of cold air inside a storm send mold and pollen high into the clouds where humidity levels and lightning rupture the spores, returning to the ground as much smaller fragments. The tiny particles can then pass from the nose and sinuses into the lungs. That, well, it's amazing. It's amazing. So when they say environmental factors can affect um, individuals with lupus, it also affects other individuals who are suffering, who, excuse me, suffering from other chronic illnesses. Want you to stay with me. And when we return, we'll be talking about cachexia syndrome and Lupus. You know, those of us with lupus experience hair loss, thinning hair, either from the illness or the medication we take. I have the perfect solution for you. It's called Vital Life. Yes, Vitalize can help you. They are in the business of growing healthy hair. They have a hair system that can help you. And even better, they have a new and improved edge control gel. That's right, ladies. There is no flaking. It lays down the edges and also protects it from heat. But wait one minute, 
Most importantly, the Edge Control has the award-winning hair growth ingredient retinin saw. Addition to the three-part scalp treatment system, there is a silk pillowcase for you to lay those growing locks on. Shampoo, conditioner, and multivitamin gummies. You can see reduced shedding in two weeks. You heard me. And most see results in four. To see proof for yourself, go on over to VitalizeHair.com. That's V-I-T-A-L-I-Z-E-H-A-I-R dot com and use the referral link listed in the information box on this podcast. We're back and we're talking about cachexia syndrome and lupus. Cachexia is mid-16th century via late Latin from Greek. Cachexia from Caicos, which is bad, plus hexis, habit. Now, the symptoms of cachexia include involuntarily weight loss. Weight loss occurs despite getting adequate nutrition or a high number. Muscle wasting is a characteristic symptom of cachexia. Loss of appetite or anorexia. Not only does food become not appealing, reduce Functional ability, common symptoms such as malaise, fatigue. Cachexia is an underappreciated complication of systemic lupus erythematosus. Researchers have reported a total of 56.3% of patients developed the involuntary weight loss accompanied by loss of homostatic control of protein and energy balance within five years of enrollment into a prospective cohort study. Now, although most patients eventually recovered their weight in 18%, the weight loss was permanent. The team reported online and arthritis care and research. Cachexia differs from starvation and malnutrition, conditions that can be promptly reversed by the provision of adequate nutrition. Cachexia is known a known feature of many disorders, including cancer, heart failure, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and is associated with functional impairments, loss of quality of life, and mortality. Now, little is known, however, about the prevalence or impact of cachexia in lupus. To explore this, there was um, a study done with analyzed data from 2,452 patients enrolled in the Hopkins, John Hopkins lupus cohort from 1987 to 2016 and who had their weight recorded at each clinic visit. Mean follow-up was 7.75 years. Now, the patient's body weight was categorized as low body mass index below 20, normal BMI 22, 24.9, 
overweight, 25 to 29.9, obese, 30 to 34.9, severely obese, above 35. Cachexia was defined as 5% weight loss in six months without starvation relative to average weight in prior visits or a 2% or more weight loss plus a BMI below 20. Now, multiple patients and disease characteristics at baseline were associated with the development of cachexia within five years. A total of 73.2% of those whose BMI was currently using steroids is 59.8% of those who were positive for anti-double-stranded DNA antibodies, 66.3%. Of those with anti-Smith antibodies, 62.8% of those with anti-LA antibodies, and 62.8% of those with anti-RNP antibodies. In addition, cachexia developed in the majority of patients with renal hematologic, and central nervous system involvement, as well as in those with serocystis and vasculitis. The cachexia was classified as intermittent if it resolved, which was the case in 45.6% of patients. Continuous cachexia never resolved and was still present at the end of the follow up in 18%, while the remainder of patients never developed the condition. Now, rate ratio for prior disease manifestation at any time adjusted for pre. I'm sorry, for prednisone use associated with the development of cachexia included serocytis RR1.15, renal RR1.33, hematologic RR1.26, Vasculitis RR 1.28. However, when the researchers looked for association with disease activity in three months preceding the onset of cachexia, they found this to be limited to renal activity. When we come back, we'll go into Further discussion regarding cachexia and lupus. The researchers considered the association between intermittent or continuous cachexia and subsequent organ damage and found that patients who cachexia was intermittent had elevated risk of developing numerous types of damage, including cataracts, retinal changes, optic atrophy, um, peripheral neuropathy, cerebral vascular accidents, pleural fibrosis, angina, erosive arthritis, osteoporosis, and avascular necrosis. Patients with continuous cachexia were at increased risk for having an estimated um, glomular filtration rate below 50, protein urea above 3.5 GM a day, and end-stage renal 
disease. It is tempting to draw a parallel between cachexia and systemic lupus erythematosus and cancer cachexia, the researchers noted. The 56% of patients reported in the study was similar to the 54% prevalence that has been reported in cancer. Although cancer patients more often have continuous cachexia, the investigators continued The high recovery rate in the current study may be attributable to improved disease activity and decreased systemic inflammation, a concept that remains controversial in cancer-related cachexia. While the specific mechanisms associated with cachexia and lupus have not been established, pro-inflammatory mediators secreted by tumors also are involved in the pathogenesis of lupus. The tumor immune system crosstalk is what I'm talking about, including interleukins 1, 6, 11, and 17, tumor necrosis factor, interferon Y, and... um. It is, um, I'm trying to put this in the right word, Um, on Custin M, you know, the researchers had explained. Further studies are needed to um, see the implications of cachexia in terms of the response to treatment, long-term outcomes, quality of life, as well as its role as a potential cardiovascular risk factor in systemic lupus erythematosus. A limitation of the study stated um was its use of BMI for the analysis, which does not reflect fat versus muscle mass or edema. And that study was last updated on August 4th of this year. Now, when it comes down to treatment, you know, there, there, is no treatment for cachexia. There's no treatment at all. But what they do suggest is that you have a good support system. You eat small meals throughout the day, out the day, throughout the day. I'm sorry, I'm tongue tied today. And do light exercise. Now, I know, um, have you heard me discuss when I was, before I was first diagnosed, how much weight I lost, where I looked like I was a crackhead. And I think that, that cachexia was a part of the weight loss and that the doctors really didn't know at the time what was going on. But I think this was a part of my problem um, because I had completely 
lost my appetite. I would look at food and it would just disgust me. Um, or I would take a spoonful of what was given to me and and I couldn't deal with it. I didn't want any of it. And I find myself now, I can go through those bouts where food disgusts me and I won't eat for a while. And when I mean a while, I mean a while um, until my family say you need to eat something. I'll go get a smoothie. I'll make myself a smoothie and drink it. But when it comes to food, when I get like that and it comes to food, I can't, I can't, I can't do it. Um, But they also state that Appetite stimulants um, may Im- may improve um, cachexia, but there there really is no known cure for cachexia and lupus. So when we return, I'll be closing out. So stay with me. You've heard the phrase, God help those who help themselves. That may be true, but he also help those who can't help themselves. And I want to talk about this for just a little bit, about that phrase. The phrase, God help those who help themselves. It is a motto that emphasizes the importance of self-initiative and agency. The expression is still famous around the world and used to inspire people for self-help. Now, this phrase originated in ancient Greece as the gods help those who help themselves and may originally have been proverbial. It is illustrated by two Aesop's fables and a similar sentiment is found in ancient Greek drama. Although it was, or shall I say, it has been commonly attributed to Benjamin Franklin. The phrase is often and sometimes mistaken as scriptural quote. Though it is not stated verbatim in the Bible. So, the next time someone implies to you that God help those who help themselves you s- simply stay and God also help those who can't help themselves you know the ones who whose backs are up against the wall The ones who have lost their job. The ones who don't know where that next dollar is coming from. I'm talking about the one who don't even know where their next meal comes from to feed their family. I'm talking about the one who has got that diagnosis that has taken you aback and you don't know which way to turn. I'm here to tell you, not only does God help those who help themselves, 
God also help those who can't help themselves, who don't know which way to turn. He's always with you. He's right there by your side. And in times like we're living today, you don't have to fret. You don't have to worry about tomorrow. You allow tomorrow to take care of itself. Know that God is always with you. And all you have to do is ask him and you shall receive. Now, he may not come when you want it, but he's always on time. I'm Susan Hendricks. I'm wishing you a most peaceful, positive, safe and oh so blessed weekend I'll see you next Friday for another episode of my story living with lupus and opinions expressed on my story living with lupus podcast represents each person's individual experience by listening to this podcast or reading our blog you agree not to use this podcast or blog as medical advice to treat any medical condition in either yourself or others as always Consult your own physician for any medical issues that you may be having. My Story Living with Lupus podcast is officially trademarked, all rights reserved.